The PowerShell App Deployment Toolkit is awesome. It's simply the only way you should be packaging apps before you upload them to Intune, in my opinion. I've done a load of videos on the new 4.1 version of PSADT, and the improvements they've made make it even better. There is one thing, though. It's quite... PowerShell-y. I mean, now I say that, sounds silly. Of course it's PowerShell-y. It's the PowerShell app deployment toolkit. But what I mean is, you need to have some awareness of PowerShell to get started with it. And wouldn't it be brilliant if you didn't need that? And so I thought I'd share with you a tool that I've seen which simplifies the packaging of apps into PSADT. And that's called Master Packages Master Wrapper. Now with Master Wrapper, we can take any app and wrap it in PSADT, either version 3 or version 4, and we can take that resulting package and get it into Intune with just a few clicks. We can use this flowchart to figure out what we're going to be doing and which tool we should use. So for example, I'm going to take this application from the vendor, I'm going to look at it in this toolbox, the whole thing is a toolbox, right? I'm actually going to be going right down the middle here, and I'm going to be using the vendor deployment solution, which is just an executable, uh, which works silently. So it has a slash S available. If it doesn't, you'd want to repackage it using master repackager. Um, but I can just use master wrapper to wrap it in PSADT and then upload it to Intune. So let's jump in and see how it looks. Actually, when you download it, you get this application. So this is a really simple, clean interface to get started. And I'm going to do a new standard V4 PSADT. The alternative would be a V3, but I'm going to go with V4, obviously. I'll click on that. And on the left-hand side, you can see we've got some sections that we're going to be going through. But to start, all we need to do is load the data from the installer. Now, I've already downloaded the installer. It's the global secure access client.exe. I'm going to grab that here and I will open that and you can see it's already grabbed the the logo which is great the icon I've got the name the version the publisher the architecture uh, the author is me in this case so I can change that can I can change that to um, to Dean Allaby. there you go and just save that awesome now the next section here we've got some deployment options so for example we can suppress a reboot if that happens we can make sure that it will work in a terminal services environment. We can change the install mode from auto, which determines it based on whether we have any prompts being created during PSADT. I'll just leave it on auto for now, it works pretty well. And then we can specify whether admin rights are required. So in this case, we will leave it as on because we're actually gonna be running as system when we install this. Intune is gonna be running as system. So this isn't about uh, whether the the user themselves need admin, this is just whether the platform needs admin. And so as we're running a system, then that's absolutely fine. Okay, loads more stuff that you can do here, including detection. So maybe you don't want to have to figure out how this application looks when it's installed correctly. And you can actually have master wrapper put an, a registry key in the installed app section of HKLM software when it gets installed so you can use that as the detection method which works pretty well okay so next we can go and look at the main actions now this is what will be set for the install command now as you can see this will do just global secure access exe on its own and that's not going to install it silently at all we do need to do slash s now for the uninstaller i had to look this up in my documentation to figure out how to uninstall it but it's going to be uh, I need to to fix this a little bit because it's going to be um, this here but that is not going to work on its own so I need to just grab this string here so we're going to open this file path and then I need to add in these arguments here go to the end of that line and the arguments list is just these here okay so that's how we uninstall it. Um, excellent, okay, so now we can choose next. 
and we get to specify whether there's going to be a progress bar for the end user. You know, all these customizations that you can do in PSADT, we can turn on here. So, for example, we can allow the welcome window. We can force um, existing apps to close. So, for example, if um, the GSA app was open, then you can make that closed. Now, you don't need to include the .exe, but you do need to include the name of the app there. And we can specify whether there's a welcome window shown to the user. And if you do that, that's where you can specify whether we force users to close applications when they're running this installation. Uh, very useful. Just remember that you just need the name of the process, not the .exe if there is one. Okay, so next, let's scroll down and take a look. We can do that for uninstall as well and repair. But let's look at the next thing we're going to go for. So we can force a reboot prompt so we can say actually there's always going to be a restart at the end of this application and we want to control that so you can say that same with the uninstall and the repair and then if we're doing an upgrade for any previous applications then you can do that but you do need the pro version everything i've shown you so far is completely free to use whereas if you want to use some of those advanced features then we need to upgrade to the pro feature next we have the script editor this is really neat because it looks like vs code if you've ever used vs code Really cool integration here, looks awesome, means you can go through and make changes to it as you need to, but very, very unique, very, very nicely integrated here, I like that. Finally, we can look at the configuration, Now, this this is the configuration of PSADT or Master Wrapper itself. So we can change the uh, icons, the banner if we're using PSADT version 3, but otherwise we have the icons here. Um, I'm not sure if you can change the icons for version 4. I might be wrong. I don't think you can. But we can see all the different changes you can make here. Really easy to use. Now, again, you can go for the Pro version if you want to make some additional changes. Uh, I think also there's Script. Um, yeah, there's the Script Explorer where you can do other cool things like um, browse for functions, create templates, all that kind of stuff available in the Pro version. We can also use digital signatures so you can sign these scripts if you want to. Probably a good idea to be honest, but you can grab that in the Pro version as well. Otherwise, we can go back to this instance of this application I'm deploying and just choose Save. And when we save it, we can select a folder. So I'm going to just create a new folder here. Call it GSA and put it in that folder there. And it will place all the installers in the files folder. And then let's take a look at where it opens that. It asked me to place all of the installers in the files folder. So it's very simple for me to do. I'll just grab this global secure access client here and put that in the files folder like that. Perfect. Okay, all done. Right, we'll close that. And now we're ready to go. This is now the master wrapper bit of this process is all complete. We can actually go ahead and test the installation of this application now, which is probably a good idea to do. So you would go to the um, this bit here, and all you would do is just run this ad admin to get the installation there and get it to run and see that it works, and then you know that it actually works. Once you're happy with that though, remember this is the package that we want to use here. So all I'm gonna do is go down to my start menu, find my master um, toolbox, and from here, it shows you all of the apps that are found on my computer, which is not exactly what I want to see right now. I want to click on this button here because that's my Intune tenant that I've connected, my first coffee tenant here. And from here, you can upload apps directly to Intune. If you wanted to, you could just create the Intune Win file without connecting to your Intune tenant. You just use the convert package to Intune. Or you can create a WIM file if you like, but I'm not, that's not what I'm going to do, be doing here. So I'm going to be using this feature to upload the application directly to Intune. I click on the tenant, and then I can add a package here. And then I just need to browse to the main installer file, which in this case is going to be Invoke App Deploy Toolkit, and it will include everything near it. So everything on the same level or below will be included in the package. So I'll click on Open, and you can see it says Global Secure Access Client. This is 213 files from this location here. It says ready to upload. Click on that, and then all we need to do is just choose. Oh, it's got the detection method for me as well. Excellent. So I'm just going to choose Upload to Intune, and this is then converting it to Intune Win and pushing it up to Intune for me in just a few seconds. So super, super simple, much easier than having to go through that command line tool of um, of, of doing the convert to Intune win, you know, the official way.
this works super, super well. It's now uploading that content for me. And when it's there, we'll be able to go in and assign it to computers that we want to deploy to. And that's it. Super simple to take an executable, customize how it installs with Master Wrapper and upload it to Intune. Let me know if you've used this or if you think this might be useful for you to try out. See you next time.